Hey everybody, it's Andrew with The Plagued Gamer, and I'm here with Ian for Magic Time Bean. He has created something almost indescribable. A scapegoat. What is this? Ian, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? <laughs> Fantastic, except I don't know what I'm escaping from, and I'm supposedly a goat. These are the questions that every player asks, and uh, this will all be revealed as you play the game. Oh, boy, let's... Oh. I don't want to spoil it. You okay, know, all right. Maybe you're a goat, maybe not. So this... Yeah, so a scapegoat. How long did this this take you, man? Uh, from the very beginning, like from making a new project, uh, it took ten months. Ten months. And we're in the prison of Agnes now. Alright, so, one of my weaknesses, platformers. And this is definitely a puzzler. I think what's really cool about this game, for the people that don't have this, you can go to your website right now, or IndieGameStand.com, where you're featured for the next couple of days. You can go directly to the website and play this in a browser. Pretty high tech. That's pretty cool. And I don't know if you just saw what I did there, but I'm a goat and I am solving puzzles. Yes. And I am dashing in the air. You've got a double jump, so yeah. Double jump That's, is necessary. It seems like um, I don't even remember thinking twice about having a double jump. It seems like <laughs> you just need those in games these days. So tell us a little bit about the process behind Escape Go. What, what inspired you to really do a project like this? It started as a quick uh, challenge, kind of after I finished Soulcaster 2, I wanted to uh, make something really simple, like a, a single screen puzzle platformer. And uh, I originally only intended to spend a week on it, but I started adding in some features that looked really cool when they worked, like blocks stacking on top of one another or being pushed by mechanisms. And uh, so I just kept adding more stuff like that. And before I knew it, I had like a pretty big challenge ahead of me, which was to make a working like physics engine, basically. Once you have things that stack on top of each other, uh, that's, that's physics in games. And so I spent the next six months basically uh, building the, the physics that enable all of these things. And uh, the end result is like a lot of the gimmicks you see where the levels take different shapes as you play through them because stuff settles and gets destroyed and the environment's very mutable. And uh, it's also very mechanical based. So I went in the direction of making stuff like kind of like Rube Goldberg machines or like this, you know, <laughs> weird, uh, infernal contraption that you're stuck inside of. And uh, yeah, that was kind of the process. There was no design document. There was no plan ever for what this would be. About a month in, I think, uh, out of a conversation with some friends, uh, the, the phrase a scapegoat came up as like a joke. And I knew immediately that my game had to be called a scapegoat. So the so you put a goat in your game, goat, and it became a game about escaping a prison. <laughs> That's a fantastic story. I am throwing a mouse now. I've played through the first set of stages here, so I sort of know what I'm doing right now. It, check that out. As soon as you get that, there's a magic hat on the mouse now. And what can you do with that? Well, you're about to see. That's nuts. <laughs> I like how you have the, the low, low vibe in here, too. S stuck? Dead? Well, just press yeah. back and you can do it again. Cause, do you remember that game? Oh, yeah. I just played through the first one with a friend, actually. Like, Man. as an adult, it was a lot easier than, I think, when I first tried it uh, as a kid because I remember it being really tough. Yeah. Some people say Solomon's 
uh, when they see this. It kind of reminds them of that. I think the flying keys at the door, like, definitely evokes a Solomon's Key vibe. That's true. That was a tough game, too, back in the day. Yeah, I never even beat, like, the fourth level in Solomon's Key. <laughs> it wasn't my goal to make something that difficult. So, we've got this all set up. It looks like this reminded me of almost like a Mega Man selection screen. So you've got, well, there's an eight bosses, but you've got a whole bunch of doors. You've got two open to you right now. And we can go in whatever. I remember the frozen caverns being a bit easier. So while I'm talking to you, we'll, we'll go in this. I really like the style. I do. And the music so far is fantastic. Now, you, did you compose this yourself? I did. Now, do you have any kind of background in the creation of music? Yeah, that is my background, actually. Before I could program uh, or design games or anything, uh, I worked as a contract composer and sound designer for video games, mainly Game Boy Advance and uh, Nintendo DS. Wow. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, let's see what we can do here. Aha! The mouse... Makes sense. Yeah, even the mouse, that's that's not something I ever would have come up with as an idea. Uh, even like written that down as a, a thing to put into the game. That was just a like kind of like a thing I stumbled upon when I was making the game. I uh, wanted to have enemies that crawl around the edges, kinda of like Metroid and like other games that have that sort of thing. And so to kind of test that out, I just made it possible to spawn these, you know, little guys in the world so I could try it out on different surfaces and with moving blocks and stuff like that. And it was just so much fun to drop the guy into the world and watch him cruise around that I decided to make that, like, the central yeah. know, gimmick of the game. I love just swapping out with the mouse. It just, it allows you to get in and it's cool too because you can actually kill enemies that way. Yeah, that swap actually, um, I think uh, you mentioned being a, a Dota player. That actually was a kind of a tribute to the Vengeful Spirit. Old. Yes, oh man, <laughs> a Vengeful Spirit. I'm sure some people will appreciate that. Oh, damn it! My goat died. <laughs> but it's neat too, because you don't feel as punished. As a matter of fact, it reminds me a lot of Super Meat Boy. And the fact that there's a lot of punishing moves, or punishing like puzzles and such that are just wait waiting for you, sometimes in dormant fashion, and you press a button and you're done, but it just immediately restarts. So it's not really that bad because you know what to avoid next time. Yeah, I didn't see any value in having huge setbacks for for dying, and I really wanted to encourage uh, experimenting. Those. I remember seeing a talk from uh, the lead puzzle designer on Limbo, and he talked about like how how much they use design to encourage experimenting. Because in Limbo, yeah, you're not set back more than like a few feet when you die in a puzzle, and I think that's that was a good move in that game, and yeah, here as well. I remember th this is man, now this is a puzzle where you really have to think about stuff. So yeah, don't be shy about killing yourself and trying again <laughs> yeah that was kind of the tough part was um, you know, oh, some, damn it. a lot of games that have puzzles will make it so that if you screw up the puzzle it kills you uh, or traps you or, or something like that and that way you know you have to restart and other games have it so you can never get the puzzle to an unsolvable state uh, and I think Portal and Portal 2 both do that like you're never in a position where you have to forcibly reload the game because you've screwed up. They always either have the world kill you if you screw up or make it so like, oh, a new block spawns and you're fine. Uh, but this kind of has it has it both ways. There are some puzzles that are really hard because you don't know if you've actually screwed up yet. It is really interesting. And in every single stage that I've been in so far has been very unique. So it's, it's not like you're trying to purposely recycle everything. Yeah, I have... Uh, there's actually not too many gadgets in the game, like, including all the walls and everything like that. There's, uh, I think, only about 30 different types of things uh, that can be arranged different ways. And 
So yeah, just with those basic ingredients, uh, quite a variety of puzzles. And since the uh, PC version came out with the level sharing, uh, there are some really amazing custom worlds built by just fans of the game, like ranging from insane torture platforming, like Super Meat Boy style stuff, to like really creative puzzles using the gadgets in ways I never. So really do you have do you have a tool set for this? Yeah, the editor is built in, and I would encourage you to check it out on the stream. But I think there's like a fifty percent chance it'll crash fraps. So maybe in a separate recording. But wow. the editor uh, that I use to make all the levels is included, and you can build levels entirely with the Xbox controller or with the mouse and keyboard. Huh. Interesting. Ooh, now we can go to several other places. The Electric Lab. I'm liking the feel of this too. Uh, right now I'm using an Xbox 360 controller, and you can totally remap your keyboard if you'd like. It, very conventional style. I just can't believe, yeah, 10 months to create something like this, and man, the, the music, again, is just, it's fantastic. And so right now, your feature, this game originally came out on Xbox Live, correct? Correct. And where is it? You just ported it to PC, when did you say? It was in June? Yeah, the, um, it was launched in the Indie Royale bundle in June for PC. Hmm. Oh my. Okay. Those Reaper dudes are... Yeah. Better be careful here. <laughs> You know what those those Reaper men, or the Grim Reapers, whatever you want to call them, remind me of those things in Kid Icarus. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's uh, quite a coincidence, because that's uh, exactly what they're based off of. Great. I don't like this game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now that there's uh, some hazardous creatures. Yeah, the sprite is actually recycled from an enemy uh, in Soulcaster. And it just, it just worked really well, especially because I wanted to have kind of the Kid Icarus Reaper behavior. Oh, there. damn it! He just reaped me. I like this, though, because it, it keeps you on your toes. And, of course, there, there's puzzle elements at the same time, so th there's some skill involved with just avoiding creatures of doom, which happens not to be uh, my style, I guess. Yeah, I wanted this to be very much a hybrid platforming and puzzle game, so that kind of one of those things could be a break from the other. Uh, I think I kind of got this idea from uh, maybe a postmortem I read on God of War, where they did this great. Uh, they don't, even though it's an action combat game, they give you a lot of breaks where you're you know, seeing new stuff, exploring, and they even have some basic puzzles in there. And that really breaks up the combat, so you don't just get fatigued by it. I hope you just saw that pro diversion. That was really pro. And yeah, that is that is a uh, very secret, expert level use of the mouse is distracting enemies. <laughs> the most professional use of the mouse is uh, using him to block fireballs like a shield. Oh uh, yeah, you could do that, couldn't you? Yikes. Yeah, I don't like it when things throw fireballs at me. Not my favorite. But how long does this game last? So that kind of depends on... Uh, well, so you're allowed to skip two of the worlds. The final stage opens up. No way. Six of the eight. Because I kind of want to give a couple free passes in case there's some levels that you just don't want to okay, all right. deal with. Uh, but you can go for 100%. Uh, I'd say to go for 100%, it's between two and four hours, depending on your prowess at puzzle games. There will be a few levels that eat up a lot of the time. Kind of, you know, uh, a few that are like the most difficult ones for most people. See, I can... I just killed some dudes. Yeah. Pretty cool. 
Oh boy. You should definitely be proud of what you've done so far, because this is... It's a very fun game! I, I haven't really, besides Super Meat Boy, sat down and played something like this in, in quite some time, and it actually makes me a little upset that I didn't know about this game beforehand, but that's the sort of the nature of the indie beast. Yeah, I'm trying my best to get the word out. Uh, but yeah, marketing and PR is not my strong suit, not yet at least. Uh, and I'm getting some help, getting better at it. But yeah, it's a... Uh, it's its own full-time job. Oh yeah, it definitely can be. And you guys are, you know, you're featured on Indie Game Stand right now. Right. The debut title for that, which is a, a big honor and pretty cool. Yeah, so it's this game that was pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this game is available there. Pay whatever you want, and I think right now, if you paid. Like a dollar eighty six or something, you will you'll actually unlock the soundtrack for this game too. Which, if you're listening to it right now, I mean, come on, listen to this. <laughs> just for a second, I'm going to I'm going to increase the music volume just, just so you can hear it. I mean, come on. Pretty good. <laughs> Definitely good. So what have people been saying about a scapegoat just in general? Uh, I think people that try it out tend to like it. Like, I'm really proud of it uh, and how it's been received. When I first released it, I was pretty... Uh, I didn't have really high expectations for it because... I don't know a lot about puzzle platformer games, and yeah, Braid and Limbo are like the main ones I have experience with, but I don't play a lot of that type of game, so I didn't have a good sense of how much fun it would be. My brother, who's also a game designer, told me that it was better than my other games, uh, and I didn't really believe him at the time, but uh, yeah, it, this has turned out to be easily twice as popular as Soulcaster. Oh my. <laughs> What a devious trap you've set for me. Oh. oh. This is what I'm talking about. That, that That's just awesome. You set a chain reaction off. It's like Kirby's avalanche. <laughs> yeah, seeing that sort of stuff in my early prototypes, uh, when it would work, I thought, yeah, I've got to find a way to make this work in the game. And it took forever, and there were times when I thought it would never happen, because it was so difficult to bug test uh, and get everything working at the same time. But I think it was worth it. Yeah, that, so far, it's... I'm, I'm taken aback by the quality behind this, and... Yeah, so you can you can get this game, Escape Goat, right now on Indie Game Stand. He's put a lot of hard work into it, and as you can see, there's there's a lot to like here. I think it's it's pretty replayable too. You can always go back, and I know there's only one way that you can solve a puzzle, but what I kind of like about these these games are that, as you said, it's as long as you kind of make it. But you can really go and like 100% the game if you can skip those last two levels. But it's just it's short. You know, you can jump back in. It's like playing Mega Man again when you're a kid. You know, wh well, why are you gonna do it? You can only you can only go one way. You eventually have to face Dr. Wily, right? <laughs> yeah. And then just beating the campaign is kind of like the beginning. Now you know all the uh, gadgets, and now you can make your own world, uh, or check out the level-creating community where uh, some really cool stuff has been made. And there's, there's like four times as many uh, custom rooms as, as there are like official rooms at this point. So let's show a little bit of the electric lab. I don't want to ruin everything. I still want people to jump in here. And this level reminds me of the castle stage. I think it was three in Ninja Gaiden Two: The Dark Sort of Chaos. One of my old-time uh, favorites. I, don't, I, I tried to suppress all memories of that game. I don't remember it much. Wow. Now this is pretty interesting. Wow. <laughs> All right. Woo! 
yeah, the point of this room is kind of just to train you, not just on what some of these gadgets do, but on this technique of uh, using the mouse as a perpetual motion machine. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic, and I'm sure that later on you're going to have to have that mouse doing that so you can't use him to block certain fireballs, as you said. Yep. Okay. Well, that's not very nice. So I think that we'll stop right here and let's take a look at the level creator. <laughs> that's that is This is a pretty intense room. I think you've got it in you. I do too. I do too. So here's the editor. Right. Let's see. All right, so it's, pro it's probably yeah, it's probably cut off just a little bit for you right now, but no, everything's good. Yeah, just a little bit on the bottom, but you can pretty much see it. Yeah. Well, this is this is interesting. So yeah, you can hold A to paint, uh, draw some walls and uh, use the right thumbstick to change the type of thing you add. And whenever you want, you can just test your level with the back button. No way, this is, this is crazy. All the stuff is available right here. I know, I should have made it DLC, so you only get like the walls to start, but if you pay me $5, then you can start adding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Jokester over here. That's great. We just make a room full of buttons. What do they do? Floor switch. Set st oh yeah, you can set the start position. Man, there really so is yeah, a lot. So yeah, the basics are, um, if you want those buttons to like, uh, I don't know, move a, uh, move a gear block, then you can just drop in a gear block anywhere in the map. And uh, yes, yeah, so you can hit LB, toggle quick. And then uh, the gear block is just to the right of that button uh, yes. in the thing selector. That's pretty cool, though. You can select it on and off. Yeah, color you can make it invisible. Uh, there's color coding, too, which some of the levels have to kind of illustrate what affects what. Yeah. All right, so you said, the, where's the gear block, this one? Uh, that's, that's it, right, yes. just to the right of the button. Gotcha. Huh. So you can drop one of those anywhere, uh, except that one's trying to move down into the wall, so it won't move. Yes. But you can change its direction if you hit X. Yeah, I'd have to mess around with this. It's pretty cool. Then, yeah, I have a face up. Very fast. And then test this out. All right. Yeah, pretty cool. Blech. So you've got a full-on editor here. Have people tried to make, well, other game levels? Of course, you know, 1-1, one, one, Super Mario Brothers. Oh, I haven't actually seen any of that yet. Really? Yeah. Well, community, we need that to happen. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll be the first person to do that. I don't know. It's yeah, pretty cool, course. though. I like, I always like editors, and I always think that I'm going to use them a lot more than I do, but I just like this here because it allows people the creative capacity to maybe think of something that you didn't. Now, you do have, I think I remember reading on Indie Game Stand that you have a couple of premium levels that people designed available. Yeah, they're um, part of the download deal uh, on Indie Game Stand, just as a as a zip, and you just drop the files into your uh, Escape Goat folder, which will appear in the Documents folder when you install the game, and uh, they'll all just be accessible from the Play menu. You can get if you already own the game, you can also get the levels uh, from the forum if you go to MagicalTimeBean.com/forum. Hmm. And if you make a level, even if it's just one room, be sure to post it there, because uh, I'm trying to encourage people to to make some levels. And anybody can download it, and that's that's fantastic. Cool. Yeah, so we've got a community just awaiting more levels that we can just mess around with. I know that Super Meat Boy had, like, a Super Meat World come a while after its release. And, yeah, it's pretty robust right now. Yeah, it's a simplistic idea with a game that... We're, we're talking pixels here, but it doesn't matter. Some of the best levels ever created. 
of all time were created on the NES with these kind of graphics. So there, yeah. is, yeah, there is no reason to shy away from this. Awesome. It makes it pretty basic, too. You know, you don't have to be a pro game designer, and you don't have to work with 3D and, you know, scripting and anything like that. I tried to make it just as fast and simple of just throwing stuff together. And even if your level is just a room filled with TNT that explodes, like, there's a place for that in this world. Well, let's see what happens here. I'm guessing you won't last long in this in this environment, but I don't know. Maybe I'm underestimating your, yeah, your skills. Yeah, it's you just you have no idea. First of all, let's see. How do you delete these guys? So uh, you can actually use the Y button as an eyedropper over empty space or a wall, and that'll uh, let you oh okay. walls instead. Yes. Is there a way that you can just get rid of the wall itself, or do you just select? Uh, yeah, you space? can eye dropper over empty space, and ah, okay. you'll be painting with emptiness. All right. Wow. So this isn't good. Yeah, you also don't have an exit, so. <laughs> you make it hard yourself. Hey. All the cool kids can survive. Oh no. All right, Ian. Well, yeah, this is so. It's a scapegoat. It's available right now on Indie Game Stand, or you can go to Magical Time Bean and pick this up. Right now, over there, I think. What does it retail? I got four ninety nine. Yeah, that's just that's the MSRP. But yeah. next couple days, uh, get it for for much less. Yeah, pay what you want, uh, Ian. You obviously deserve a lot of credit here. How very talented. Music is great, and yeah, please check out this game. I appreciate your time. Hey, yeah. Uh, thanks so much.